welcome back to the David67 Celtic News YouTube channel uh, for today, Thursday the 31st of August. Um, just to start off, before I forget, please like and subscribe. Just uh, three more to reach target number one of 50 subscribers. Uh, remember, there will be a um, fun Celtics Rangers uh, based trivia question in the question section. And I'm also going to pop a video uh, interview with our uh, number seven signing of this signing window, Libby's Palma. And I'll pop that in the uh, video section of the community challenges uh, channel as well. So today, a lot of uh, news, um, almost all good news. And also, at the end of the video, I'm going to do a very quick preview of the Champions League draw, which is this evening at tea time. And we'll plan either to do a live stream of the draw or a quick reaction to the draw um, video at, uh, uh, at around uh, five, six o'clock this evening, once the draw is known. So, um, as I said, lots of good news. Luis Palma, um, the Honduran uh, attacker stroke left winger, has signed a five-year deal with Celtic. Um, this is uh, a great move for Celtic and signing him at this point and getting all the paperwork and visas and permits and uh, clearances through so quickly was admirable from Celtic's admin team and transfer team and this should give him a couple of days training time with his new teammates and um, thus would be available for selection on Sunday. I think he can be a very much a difference maker, uh, able to score uh, more than his fair share of goals, better output than um, Maida, better output than Jota, and a similar kind of output to Lee Labada at the start of his first season with Celtic. He will be wearing number seven for Celtic, um, which of course, for those who are that wee bit older, was a jersey worn by Jimmy Johnston in the Lisbon Lions years and up into the early 70s, later also worn by Kenny Dugleish, um, again one of Celtic's great players, and um, of course Henrik Larsson in the years of the late 90s through the 2000s. Um, and so three of Celtic's greatest ever players all have worn the number seven shirt for Celtic. Um, I don't think necessarily Lewis Palmer is going to be another Daglish, Larson or uh, Johnson, but uh, I think he is going to be a, a very good player for Celtic. Other very good news is our centre back crisis appears to have been resolved with a one year loan signing of Nat Phillips, the 26 year old uh, Liverpool central defender. This is thought to be a loan deal simply for one year with no obligation to buy at the end. Phillips is, uh, has been at Liverpool for many years, has only played 100 games uh, in first team, has had, however, successful um, loan seasons with Bournemouth and in Germany, and has very often deputised in Liverpool's defence, covering from injuries and suspensions, and whenever he has deputised for Van Dijk and Matip, and Gomez, etc. He has always performed very well, and this includes uh, a few games in the Champions League, where again he was uh, able to play at a high level, and has also, uh, on a couple of occasions, uh, managed very well playing with uh, against Erling Haaland uh, in Germany and in uh, England. Um, I think this will be a good uh, option for Celtic. An experienced player has had experience uh, at the highest level in England and in Germany and in the Champions League um, and also has a very good injury record for a player. Um, 
in defence also. Yet other good news is the Paolo uh, Bernardo loan deal is said to be very close to completion. It is going to be a season long loan with the expectation of an obligation to buy at the end of that. Very similar to the deal that uh, Celtic struck with Benfica for Jota uh, two years ago, where we had him for one year on loan and then a set fee for transfer. And the indications are this will be the case also for Bernardo. Um, the sources suggest that there is a 100 million euro price tag. However, um, this is not thought to be the case any longer and that Benfica and Celtic will be negotiating a transfer fee of maybe five, six, seven million at the end of the one year loan with the caveat of there being a very significant sell-on fee percentage going to Benfica, which uh, apparently is very similar to the deal that Celtic and Benfica had with Jota. Uh, many pundits and experts are suggesting that Paolo Bernardo could be a replacement for Arden Moy, and certainly in the late part of the season just ended, and in the early games of this season, Celtic do appear to be missing the influence of Arden Moy, who was able to play in a more defensive role, primarily central midfield, but also was able uh, it to move into the attacking third, setting up goals, scoring goals uh, and linking. Um, and from his scouting reels uh, and highlight reels that we have watched and were included in a previous video. He certainly appears to have all the skills to be a superb player in Scotland and in Europe. Um, it is thought that uh, Nat Phillips is already in Glasgow to sign his one year loan deal and that Bernardo is to arrive today, when uh, today, a Thursday, to complete his loan deal from Benfica to Celtic. I think um, Phillips could go straight into central defence on Sunday against Rangers to partner uh, Lagerbielk with, uh, as things stand, Alistair Johnson at right back and Greg Taylor at left back. And think that um, Bernardo would be on the bench. And I'm very hopeful that Luis Palma will start on the left uh, side of attack for Celtic. Other good news is that um, Oh, our South Korean uh, striker, is back in training on Wednesday and should be fully fit to be at least on the bench for Sunday and could well be a good player to bring on later in the, ga the game against Rangers as I think his aerial ability could be a key against Rangers who last night looked very, very shaky in defence and very, very vulnerable to the high ball from free kicks and corners into the box. And so O oh, could well be a good impact player for Celtic on Sunday. Yuki Kobayashi is also said to be back in training as of yesterday, um, but I think he will uh, be more kept in reserve uh, rather than having any role on Sunday. Other good news is that the contract negotiations with Lee Labada appear uh, almost to be concluded with uh, an extension to his contract and an increase in his salary. Um, I often forget that he is only 21 years old. He does actually have three years left on his current contract, but if Celtic were able to sign him for an extra couple of years, taking him up to 26, I think this would be a great move for Celtic and also um, will bring his uh, weekly wages into line with several of the other high, higher paid players at Celtic, which um, is good for team morale and team spirit, and also appears to give him quite a few of the um, reassurances that Ange Postacoglu 
was unwilling to give him last season. Less good news is that the left back Quentin Merlin, who was said to be high on Celtic's wish list uh, at left back, has chosen to stay in France for at least one more season. He is very keen to play in the 2024 Paris Olympics football tournament and feels that remaining in France will keep him in the shop window for that. Um, and so uh, it appears all hopes of signing him have gone. And I do think he was actually a very uh, good signing for Celtic and could have been a superstar for Celtic. However, um, it would not be too unexpected if those uh, signing talks and moves were resurrected next summer after the Olympics and that he may well be a Celtic player um, um, for next season rather than this season. A couple of stories also that the Matthijs Kiesgarden transfer from Bromby might be uh, resurrected as Bromby have had second thoughts at turning down Celtic's two bids. Um, and at the same time, Bologna and Celtic have had early uh, discussions regarding the signing of Sidney van Hoydonk um, from Bologna. Um, Bologna I would appear to have dropped their um, transfer demand fee from eight to six million euro, uh, six million pounds, and also there appears to be uh, some disputes between Bologna and Sidney van Hoydonk's dad, Pierre, who of course was an ex-Celtic player. Pierre van Hoydonk had quite a reputation, wherever he went, of causing problems, getting into disputes and having temper tantrums, although his dad was an extremely uh, gifted footballer who scored a lot of goals for Celtic in his couple of seasons with us. I think both Keith Garden and Van Hoydon would be great signings for Celtic and would bring a different sort of striker who, who could fit into Celtic's team and could work alongside our existing main striker, Kyogo, or deputise for him in times of injury and uh, need for uh, resting. I would be very happy if Celtic signed either Van Hoydonk or um, Keith Garden. And uh, I think with Bronby uh, having second thoughts and with the internal disputes at Bologna, um, both of these could well be players we see signed for Celtic uh, in the, the last couple of days of the transfer window. Celtic, however, do remain interested in a new left back. And according to a couple of inside sources who have shared their um, knowledge and thoughts in vlogs and internet articles, Celtic do appear to have another left back lined up, although the name for that is uh, hasn't been released as yet. And Celtic have had early discussions with Cagliari regarding their goalkeeper, <coughs> Boris Radonovic, um, who has been at Cagliari for a couple of years and has played for a variety of other Italian top league teams and has built up a good reputation within Italy and Europe. Um, now, Cagliari have uh, acknowledged Celtic's bid and there appears to be a um, problem at Cagliari as they feel they have to get a, a new backup goalkeeper before they can release uh, Rodonovic. And so I do wonder whether this might be a winter transfer window signing rather than one in the next couple of days. Um, I have not seen any real mention of any other goalkeepers on Celtic's radar to come in and be a starter in replacing Joe Hart, 
although I do feel this has been a priority position, but um, Brendan Rogers does not appear to have acknowledged this as he has consistently said in press conferences that Joe Hart is his number one goalkeeper. However, by the se behind the scenes, it does appear Celtic have been looking at a number of goalkeepers, primarily Livakovic, who is now at Fernabachi. Uh, and so I am encouraged that we have another top level, goal level goalkeeper uh, under close uh, scrutiny and scouting. And we think this may well be a move that Celtic make in the winter rather than now, as it would appear to be too last minute to sign him by tomorrow. Finally, tonight is the Champions League draw um, around five to six in the evening. Um, as I said, I may, may plan to do a live stream or will at least do a post draw uh, reaction video. I have done quite a few simulations on the Champions League draw simulator um, and there are a few permutations that would not be in Celtic interest and a few that could even get us through us in second place um, and several where we would be a good chance of being the third team in the in, in the group and that thus into the Europa League. Uh, looking at the various pots which are now confirmed after the final three qualifier fixtures last night where Rangers were rather decimated and destroyed um, by PSV, exposing a considerable amount of weaknesses in their defence, midfield and attack. And the only player, I think, that came out with any credit from yesterday's match um, against PSV was Jack Butland, uh, who made some several, several good saves. And so I actually am very encouraged for the weekend as I think Rangers are a weak side, um, still working out how, what their best team is, what their best tactics are. And I think they are actually a team for the taking on Sunday, despite what some other uh, pundits and experts and journalists and ex-players have been saying. However, I'll expand on that on Saturday when I do my preview video for that. So again, just to finish off, looking at the pots, um, in pot one, the two weakest sides would be Porto and Feyenoord. In the second pot, uh, Benfica and Red Bull uh, Leipzig. And in the third pot, Salzburg, Braga, Red Star Brigade, Copenhagen and Shakhtar. Now, in those five teams in pot three, I think Celtic would have a good chance of taking um, a point away from home and then beating them at Celtic Park. Um, I think against by if Benfica, Feyenoord, Porto, Leipzig again, I think we've got the chance to beat them at Celtic Park um, and uh, possibly get a point away from home as well. I think Celtic's team if Rodgers can get the um, team spirit and the cohesion back to how it was under Postacoglu and maybe adopt some of Postacoglu's more attacking minded, quicker, pacey, um, urgent way of playing football, I think Celtic could take on um, several of these uh, sides and do well and at least come through the group as third place. There is the, the nightmare scenario of getting Man City from pot one, Real Madrid from pot two, and AC Milan from pot three. However, in doing the simulation draw 10 times, I never got that permutation. And on uh, five of the 10 goals, uh, we got Copenhagen as the uh, third, third pot side and Benfica on four of the occasions uh, uh, coming out of pot, uh, pot uh, one and on three of the occasions Porto coming out of pot two. I think all those teams are there for the taking. So thank you for listening. Uh, please like and subscribe. 
try and get um, the numbers up to 50 if we can by by the end of the end of the week uh, have a wee go at the, the fun trivia Celtic Rangers quiz question um, do have a wee listen to uh, Lewis Palmer's welcoming interview uh, for which I'll leave a link in the description and pop it in the committee section get back to you again one way or another this evening for the Champions League draw uh, and so for now thank you goodbye and hail hail